Back in 2001, I got home internet for the first time. It was Time Warner's Roadrunner high-speed cable internet. And for the first couple of years, it was fantastic. It was plenty fast for what I needed, and it was very reliable. But after a couple of years, the connection started to drop, started having a couple hours of outages, and then the outages would last for days. After a while, I had to call Time Warner and have him send a technician out. They'd swap out the cables inside the house. They even replaced the cable drop from the pole to the house. They replaced the splitters. They replaced the splitter amplifier inside the house. Everything they did to try to boost the signal level on the cable. And every time the technicians were out of the house, the connection worked fine. But they would swap out the cable modem, and they would always swap it out with a used modem that smelled like an ashtray. I remember one time, I even washed the cable modem and let it dry out completely and hooked it up and it worked. I'm sure Time Warner wouldn't have been too pleased to know I did that. One particular horror story is a technician that was sent out here and replaced the splitter amplifier inside the house and some more cabling, but for some reason, Time Warner never gave their technicians their own laptops to bring out to people's houses. They always insisted on using the customer's computer, which I didn't like because I'm very particular about my stuff. Well, I had an old laptop that I would connect directly to the cable modem, but this time, instead of letting me check the connection, the technician insisted on using the laptop himself because he had to enter a password to get into the modem's diagnostics. Now, whenever the technicians would come out to swap out that cable modem, it would always be some old used one that smelled like an ashtray. Ugh. Anywho, when the tech saw that I was uncomfortable with him using my computer, he rubbed his hands all over his face and started touching the keyboard, looking at me with this mean grin on his face. How delightful. Well, shortly after that experience, the internet still didn't work most of the time, although it always seemed to work when the technicians were out there. So, finally in 2009, I switched to DSL from AT&T. It was kind of slow, but more reliable, until September 2017 when the DSL started having serious connectivity problems, and I decided to give cable internet another try. In 2016, Charter Spectrum had bought out Time Warner Cable, so I thought maybe they had upgraded or at least repaired their infrastructure over the past seven years. So after buying my own cable modem and calling Spectrum to set up the service, I was pleasantly surprised that not only was it reliable, but very fast. And after my router failed earlier this year, I upgraded it to a gigabit router and the speed was no longer limited to 100 megabits per second, so it got even faster. In fact, it more than doubled and everything was humming along great until August 8th, 2021. When the cable internet started behaving more like it did with Time Warner prior to 2009. I made some calls to Spectrum about the problem and spoke to them multiple times on Twitter, and the response was always to send a technician out, you know, to swap out my modem with an ashtray scented one and grub around on my computer. And after my past bad experiences with Time Warner, I wanted to put off a house call until there was absolutely no other option. Well, I didn't want a repeat of all the trouble that I had when they sent the technicians out when I had Time Warner. That's all they wanted to do, send a technician out to swap out the modem and check the lines. Well, I knew what was inside the house wasn't the problem. And since I own my own cable modem this time around, I'm no longer locked out of the diagnostics page of the modem. Uh, by the way, if Spectrum ever goes into my modem and locks me out of that, they're going to hear from my attorney. The diagnostics page of the modem here is useful for monitoring connection errors and signal quality, but it's just a snapshot in time. It occurred to me that changes over time would be orders of magnitude more useful. So I started examining the HTML source of the modem's diagnostics page to see if I could write something to parse that data and log it into a database. So that's exactly what I did. After writing a parser to grab the raw statistics from some JavaScript strings in the page's source, I built an application in PHP and JavaScript that runs on a Raspberry Pi. It screen scrapes and parses that data from the modem as well as making an API call to another Raspberry Pi I have, which logs the temperature in the room. In addition to that, I also have it ping my website and grab current weather data from weather.gov's API so that environmental factors that could potentially affect the connection could be cross-referenced. 
And the front end of the application produces various line graphs showing the logged data. There are date selectors to pick the time range too. According to the line graphs, it's very clear when the outages occur. They seem to have little to do with the downstream power levels, which stay within a very good range. The upstream power level, and especially the signal-to-noise ratio, show when there are problems on the line. The ping times chart will also show excessive delays during the times the signal-to-noise ratio shows bad readings. A, a little more background here. I used to work for the cable company back when it was TCI Cable in the late 1990s, but I worked in the cable advertising and video production side of things and was the voice of Channel 18 Cable Advertising for a year. 1994 Ford Tempo, like new, only 4999 uh, anyway, I did make some frequent trips to the cable head ends to swap out the tapes for commercials before things went digital. Huh, I'm not an expert when it comes to cable, but I do know the basics of cable modem technology, DOCSIS, how the frequency channels work on the line, and quadrature amplitude modulation. Uh, but yeah, my best guess without current inside knowledge is that there's some kind of interference. If there were damage to the line causing a weak signal, the power would drop significantly when the signal-to-noise ratio does. The increase in upstream power means a cable modem is trying to compensate for a bad signal. And going back to the Time Warner days, my best theory at the time was that there was some kind of bad cable line somewhere because the outages used to coincide with the temperature outside dropping below freezing. I thought maybe some kind of thermal contraction was causing the copper wire inside the cable to shrink just enough to break the connection in a weak spot. I don't know. Uh, but since the more recent problems happened during 90 degree weather, I seriously doubt that theory was correct, and now that I have tools to analyze the signal, I know the power levels are not weak. The most curious part of this to me is how the signal to noise ratio goes from steady to erratic and then back to steady very abruptly. It's as if the source of the problem is switched on suddenly and, and then after so many hours it's just suddenly switched off. So the connection is either extremely good, or it's not available at all. Download speeds are better than advertised, and upload speeds are acceptable, and certainly better than the less than a megabit I was getting with the DSL. I'll probably make a follow-up video once I've gathered some more information and perhaps learned a bit more about the signal's behavior. Now that's my story about the problems I've been having with cable internet, and the tool I developed to help analyze the signals and try to figure out what in the world's going on. That's about all for now. Thanks for watching.